Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here with Baloo Freedom Outreach Puppy Extraordinaire and trust me, I'm going to explain exactly that in this video and I am here with, of course, No Force One newly wrapped and with some amazing graphics here thank you to everybody who helped make that possible and I'm gonna get away from some of these idling trucks here just wanna give you guys another shot of the front of this amazing vehicle and I'm gonna walk away from the the middle of the parking lot here hopefully I don't get run over on my way we are at a truck stop a little ways north of Orlando how far I don't know it depends how long Elijah was driving last night he is asleep inside the vehicle but I really want to share uh, a, a great story from last night and I think a very important lesson for anybody who cares about freedom and making the world a better place through universal nonviolence, through voluntarism, through waking people up, but more importantly, through actually changing the world uh, in, in physical reality, not just in people's minds. And I think that's a, a, a hugely important thing for us to remember as libertarians who often get caught up in the intellectual and the philosophical and lose sight of the practical. So, last night, we pulled up to a Waffle House, the Waffle House in the middle of Orlando. Now, there are two Waffle Houses one mile apart in the middle of Orlando. So, I mean the one on the north, obviously, and we pulled up last night with, uh, with No Force One, and it was, uh, it was just, it was really, you know, different than pulling up in an RV with, without any graphics on it, obviously. And uh, let's see, I, I'll go over here to this little, little picnic area. So we pulled up to the, uh, to the Waffle House and Elijah uh, gets out first and goes, uh, Adam, they're, they're clapping for us. And I was like, what, what, what do they, you know? And I was like, well, I have random fans working at Waffle House. How awesome is that? And, but the thing is they were, they weren't actually clapping for me. That's the thing. Um, they, they were, I mean, in a sense they were, they were clapping because they saw no force one because they saw the, the you know, the, the, the basic messaging there, they saw freedom logo. They saw, we don't have to be united under one government to be united in American values. And they were just, they just started clapping. Now it was, uh, it, it was three people in the restaurant uh, working there by themselves. It was pretty late, like a little after 11 o'clock, I think. And, you know, got out, went in the, uh, went in the restaurant and right away got to meet uh, a few amazing people. And I want to especially give a shout out to Didi and Cavus who were there. And I, 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 Didi, thank you for your amazing service, your your wonderful smile and friendliness, and 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 the connection that we had last night. It was it was really amazing. I very much appreciate that, and uh, for taking a selfie with No Force One. That was a lot of fun. I think you're the first, actually. Yeah, Didi, congratulations. You are the first uh, person with the uh, with the selfie in front of No Force One that I know of. So something happened in the Waffle House that night last night that that was really incredible because I I've never just pulled up and been able to make such an entrance showing hey I'm running for president in order to dissolve the federal government running for not president running to be the uh, bankruptcy agent of the federal government of the United States and what I realized was that you know one of the important things about about running for public office is listening and I want to especially thank Cavus there for sharing his story with me and you know being so open and trusting uh, about what he had experienced and uh, I'm not gonna just you know out of respect for his privacy I'm not gonna share any of the particular details uh, of his life story but he's had some challenges like we all have and uh, like a lot of us a lot of his are related to government. No surprise. Yeah, government makes things hard for a lot of people. 
Oh, Blue, Blue sees another puppy there. He wants to go hang out with Blue. Give me just a few minutes. You're yeah, such a good boy. Oh, all right. I'll give you a treat. So, <laughs> what what I realized, Blue, take it, was that I think something very important for for libertarians to understand because we we talk a lot about how to talk to statists, how to convert people, how to wake people up, how to get them to hear our message. And and I think that's that's very narrow-minded thinking already, right, in, in and of itself, in a way that we don't even think about, because it's like, well, well, we figured it out, you know, we, we got it, you know, someone woke us up, or, or we read a book, or, or something like that. But the people, like, like, most people who are watching this video right now, probably, uh, you know, my audience, my fans, my supporters, uh, I would imagine <clears throat> are uh, much more intellectually engaged with philosophy and politics than the average human being, than the average American. Uh, and, and it's a hard thing for, for libertarians to accept oftentimes that, that human beings are first and foremost creatures of pragmatism. Philosophy doesn't matter for crap if you can't feed your family. It doesn't matter if you're facing threats from the police in your community. It doesn't matter if you're poor because the government is taking 30% out of your paycheck and another 20% of what you earn in hidden fees, fines, costs, and other taxes government. So that, yeah, for the average working American, the cost of government adds up to about 50% of your paycheck. Yeah, the average working American is working for government half the year. So, what I want to talk about today is listening to statists. And what happens when you listen to statists is it's incredible. When you listen to people in general. And, you know, I, I just did a, a nonviolent communication workshop in Acapulco. And it's really, uh, you know, a, a beautiful part of that process to be able to connect with someone. Uh, at the heart level, but nowhere in, you know, nonviolent communications there, well, here's how you talk to people and put them on the spot about their worldview. And, and here's how you explain this. And here's how you do this. And here's how you argue more effectively. No, 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 that doesn't work. That doesn't, that doesn't make you connected to other people. And I've become known in part for my man on the street videos where, you know, I go and I do a kind of Socratic dialogue with a, with a stick microphone and a big part of that, you know, people see that and they think, you know, it's like, it's putting people on the spot and it's, it's challenging them and it, it's asking them tough questions and it's making them think. And, and that's part of it. But if you, if you notice <clears throat> almost every single video that I do like that, I start with, Please tell us your name, where you're from, and why you're here today. Now, sometimes I'm just, you know, random street, corner, whatever. Sometimes I'm at a protest. Sometimes I'm at some other kind of event. But I always start with, and you know, sometimes it gets cut out of the video. Sometimes this is just a way to get the conversation going. But I always start with, why are you here today? Why? What is your purpose? What's going on in your life? And the reason this is so important is not just to make other people feel heard, not just to, you know, be a, be a compassionate, empathetic listener, to be a good communicator, to be uh, caring and, and kind and, and, and polite. No, it's, it's you know, those are, those are all great things too, but it's really about connecting with people on a heart level, as Marshall Rosenberg of Nonviolent Communication would say. And of course, you know, I got to say a little plug and caveat here with Nonviolent Communication. Anytime you tell libertarians about communication who want to respond, but it's communication, of course it's nonviolent, screw you. You go, yeah, that's, that's the problem and that's why we need nonviolent communication. Of course it's a metaphor. We're not talking about communication that's literally violent. But it's about maximizing the value of any exchange between individuals who are willing to engage 
in in honest conversation. Now, of course, NBC has its limitations. It doesn't work when someone's punching you in the face necessarily. But even then, some of the principles apply. (laughs) Why are you hitting me in the face? Are you angry? Let's talk about your feelings. It's true. I mean, one of the the videos that I'm I'm famous for is the uh, would-be bully gets kokeshed. Where I, I, I'm talking to a guy in a bar who came down and wanted to, wanted to kick my ass because of something I said about the military. But in the bigger picture, listening to statists is so much more important than talking to them or talking at them or winning converts or sharing their wor- our worldview and, and teaching them about philosophy and freedom. No, no, no. And I know we're a movement dominated by white male INTJs like myself. I'm only half white. Unless you want to call Jewish white, but whatever. Yeah, we're, we're a bunch of nerdy, socially awkward people. Because, you know, we're the ones who, you know, who came to this message from, from that deep intellectual uh, pursuit, often, most of us. But also from, from feeling downtrodden, you know, we're not the captains of the football teams or the cheerleading squads. No, we are the ones who are, who are the victims of the system, who are the first to question it, to, to really get in and, 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 and see past it and try to understand something different. So oftentimes we, we, we forget that empathetic listening is really critical to connecting with people, to moving humanity forward, to just getting shit done. You want to get shit done, you got to listen to people. And if we're really focused on on talking to people as opposed to listening to people, not only do we waste so much time in seminars about strategy and oh well and 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 rhetoric and oh we're going to use this approach and that approach and and you know no 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 we but we also we end up embracing, I mean, already, I, I suppose you could say, if that's our approach, we have already embraced the wrong strategy. If you don't bring people together by telling them they're wrong or by working on their world. People don't want that. What do people want? And when you get to that point, when you start really listening to people, when you have, and I, and, I, and I realized last night that that's one thing I think that, that I, I really value most about my 11 now full-time years as an activist. Jeez, what was late February? <clears throat> really close here, coming up, I call March 19th my full-time uh, activism anniversary because that was when I did uh, Operation First Casualty, the mock combat patrol in Washington, D.C. with the Rock Veterans Against the War back in 2007. And back then it was being surrounded by veterans, you know, and, 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 and listening to my fellow veterans and the experiences that we had coming out of the military that propel us to stand up against militarism. But last night, especially talking to Cavus and Didi, what I realize is that what I am doing is the product of having listened to people for so long. You know, I'm not a libertarian because I want to be right about everything. I'm not a libertarian because I want to be able to win debates and arguments and, and, and yell at people with confidence. No, I'm a libertarian because I want to make the world a better place. I'm an activist. I want to fight against injustice. The injustice isn't in people's heads, it's in physical reality. It's people getting robbed and beaten and assaulted by government every single day in this country. It's about the effects on individual lives. It's about how people are hurt by government. So if you change your approach, I'm not saying we shouldn't talk to statists, no. I'm not saying that we shouldn't get our message out, of course not. But when you change your approach from a talking-based attitude to a listening-based attitude, you stop thinking about, how do I get everyone to agree with me? How do I get everyone to hear my message? How do I get everyone to realize how wrong government is, how wrong they are to be a Republican or Democrat? No way. Instead, you start thinking about, how do I apply my principles 
to create policy that immediately improves everyone's life. You wanna know why the Republicans and Democrats beat the Libertarians every dang time? It's not because they keep us off the ballot. It's not because their messaging is better than ours. Obviously we have the best message. Individual freedom, peace, prosperity. Yeah, how's that compared to war and surveillance and the police state and the nanny state? Duh. Of course we have the better message, but no, you know what it is that Republicans and Democrats are engaged in the practical. Now, of course, we know they're corrupt. We know that their reason for existence is to rip people off, to keep the, the duopoly going, to serve their corporate sponsors. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not pretending that it's anything else. But, I mean, think about Bill Clinton. I feel your pain. You know, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so corny that, that he turned it into a cliche. But think about why that worked for him. Why does that not work for libertarians? Because in the past, we've been too intent on talking and not enough on listening. And so when you apply your principles and say, you know what, I, I want to create practical policy that immediately improves everyone's lives. Oh, wow, it becomes so much easier to connect with people. So last night at the Waffle House, in the middle of Orlando, to the north, one mile north of the other Waffle House in the middle of Orlando, I got to have this, this amazing conversation, conversations, and it was because I was listening, not because I was talking, but when I had listened to people, I was able to say, you know what, I feel you, I understand this. And by the way, what I'm working on is gonna help you. And yeah, I gave them copies of my book, but by the time we were done, they were asking for them. I didn't have to go in there and stand up on a table and give a speech. I didn't have to go up to strangers and say, here, I have a copy of my book, let me talk to you about freedom. No, I just had to be a listener. I just had to engage politely and compassionately and empathetically. And the result was that Dee Dee ended up becoming and taking a selfie with No Force One. And Cavus, I am so excited, dude, to hear your attitude that you want to get involved with something bigger. He wasn't going, gee, I need a consistent worldview. Gee, I need to understand what government is. No, he was just, you know, I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. I want to be a part of a movement. And in order for people to feel that, they have to feel heard first. And I think when you listen to the American people, when you listen to anybody, when you listen to people of the world, and you can connect with the pain of statism and you understand it through the eyes of a libertarian, through an activist, you don't go, let me give you a book. Let me tell you about how government is wrong. No, you go, wow, I feel your pain. Let me see if I can do something to alleviate that. Let me see what I can do to make your life better. So I put this out there partly to, you know, further explain, because I finally came to, uh, to this, this very important, deeper understanding of my own campaign and what I'm doing. But uh, I, I learned a bigger lesson about, about listening, you know, about, you know, and I've, I've learned it before. It's not new to me, but last night, thanks to Dee Dee and Cavus, I was able to make some, some deeper connections about that. So I kind of want to put this out there as a challenge to the libertarians out there to be better listeners, to stop worrying about how to talk to statists and stop thinking about, start thinking about how to deeply empathically from the heart connect with the people around you. That's what's going to change the world. Not some philosophical debate, not some argument, not even a book. No, ultimately, it's those personal connections. So, better living through listening. More freedom through connecting with people. More love through empathy. And through all of that, we are going to be able to achieve our goals 
of a truly free, voluntary society. Peace, love, and freedom.